Low temperature diamond mining in a wing is probably the most profitable way of mining in Elite. And today I'm going to show you my ship built for that specific task. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Antwerp Astronomy. So in a previous video, which you can see up here in the Moines Firecon, we talked about why mining in a wing is so or can be so profitable if done right and how you can do it to get a very, very significant increase over, um, over solo mining. And in that video, I promised you that I will show you the build that I'm using. So that's what we're going to do today. I know some of you guys may not have access to the cutter or may not want to do the investment and buying an expensive ship like this um, for mining. Um, so if you want to get started and it's a little bit cheaper, you don't want to unlock the cutter, then I am considering making a build with an accompanying build guide video for a engineered type 9 that can do not as well, but pretty much as well as, uh, as this ship. If you're interested in that, let me know in the comment section down below and then I'll try to get that video out for you guys if there's an interest for it. But first, let's dive into the weapons here. Now, of course, I will provide a link in the video description where you can go and have a look at the build from Coriolis if you want to. But there are some places throughout the build where you can make some changes and you have some options to swap things around. So I really recommend that you like stick around and uh, and watch the video because there's some, some rather uh, useful points along the way. First of all, regarding weapons, we are mining in a wing and that means things can happen. People arrive late or people disconnect and have to come back in. Uh, all sorts of things can happen, causing people to drop in to the instance after you have started mining. And of course, when people drop into an instant, there's a chance of spawning NPC pirates. So we will need some kind of weaponry to take care of them. And I've gone with two large beam lasers, and these are modified both with efficient and regeneration sequence. Regeneration sequence, healing your other um, uh, wing members if you shoot these lasers at them. Really nice if someone comes in and they have really weak shields, or if they, I don't know, crash into a rock and their shields go a little low, you can heal them back up with this. Um, again. These are just generally nice to have. And again, just because we want some kinetic damage as well, I've gone with one huge multi-cannon, and this one is overcharged and corrosive shell. When it comes to the mining lasers, this is where you have some of your first options. Now, I recommend that you, at the very least here at the front, you can see these are two hard points located right next to the staircase going down at the nose of the ship, that you fit normal grade two mining lasers. The ship can definitely handle it, and it does speed up your mining significantly. However, on the two rear engine nacelles, or whatever you want to call it, I've gone with mining lances, and I've done that again because if we go out and we take a look at the ship, you can see how far away they are from the top of the ship. I mean, they're sitting all the way back there, and the front of the ship is, is all the way out there. That's like 200 meters, and they have a hundred uh, no, sorry, uh, 500 meter range. So you are going to have a shorter range, and as we talked about in the mining video, you are going to be using your range to kind of control the inflow of cargo to balance it out. So sometimes you are further away from the rock than you maybe wanted to be. So that's why I decided to go with, with mining lances. But you can, if you want to, you can switch those lances out for just normal um, 2D mining lances as well. That will speed up your mining a little bit. But again, remember, here it's all about balance to try and make everybody mine at the same rate rather than having you mine as fast as you possibly can. When it comes to utility mounts, um, I should say that I have gone way overboard in the shields. They are I, un unnecessarily overpowered for what we're doing. So you don't need this amount of shield boosters I, I have on here, but I always like to get as much out of the ship as I possibly can. But I just want to start with the heatsink launchers. I have fitted two heatsink launchers. Again, two is probably overkill. I probably could have made do with just one. It's really rare that I have to use them. It's really only if I get too close to a star or something like that, if I mess up on the uh, on a scoop or something, we don't have a fuel scoop. So I don't know. If it's just like an emergency thing um, and the cutter has a tendency to sometimes overheat and we don't want our cargo hatch to get damaged because then we'll begin to leak cargo and that's obviously a bad idea. 
a bad thing. Um, these are engineered with ammo capacity, both of them, giving us uh, an extra charge. When it comes to, um, to the shield booster, I have a combination of um, resistance um, with super capacitor. And those down here at the bottom are uh, should be heavy duty super capacitor. And in case you're wondering, I have three of each. Um, so three heavy duty super capacitors and three resistance augmented super capacitors. Now moving on to the core internals. Um, I stuck with a lightweight alloy again. We're not really expecting our shields to drop and I have engineered it here for, um, for heavy duty deep plating. Again, you don't have to engineer this. It's just because, you know, when I do these builds, I always put the uh, engineering on everything that I can. For the power plant here, I have gone with a armored power plant with thermal spread. So why armored? Well, it's not because we're afraid it's going to be destroyed, but you can see here that at armored power plant both give us increased power capacity um, of 12% and also reduce our heat efficiency or yeah, yeah, reduces our heat. So making our heat efficiency, well, it reduces our heat efficiency, which is good. Well, it doesn't really make sense, but you want that number to be lower. You can see we are going at 20% more heat efficient. Both things that are really good, especially with the lasers. The mining lasers do generate a lot of heat. So going for some heat efficiency is really nice. Um, and with the armor, we do have enough power, as you can see here, with a little bit to spare to, uh, to run the build as it is right now. Then thrusters, I've gone with D-rated thrusters for extra jump range. Um, jump range is a bit of a downside with the ship here, as you can see here in a bit when we come down to the frame shift drive. So I have gone D-rated to kind of make it, I don't want to downgrade them too much so that it's, it's too hard to handle. We still want to be able to have some speed in the belt when we are flying around, but we don't want to sacrifice too much of our jump range either. Um, and these are, of course, um, dirty drive, drag drives. And of course, frame shift drive, no surprises here. Now we can see our... Um, um, we should be able to see our jump range. We already can't down here. Um, so we have a minimum jump range. So that with a full cargo of only 24.6 light years. That's not a whole lot, but it's, it'll have to be good enough. Increased range, mass manager, no surprises there. Same with the life support, really no uh, surprises here. We are going with a D-rated life support with lightweight, again, to make things as light as possible. For the power distributor, I've gone with a 7A, so we can feed those very, very power-hungry mining lasers. Um, and I've gone with a charge enhanced super conduit. You can't go weapon focused, but it can run with a charge enhanced. So that's what I've done. So we can boost a little more often and it will recharge our shield faster. And again, sensors, no surprises here. It is D rated sensors with lightweight on it again for that extra jump range. Optional internal wise, it's pretty straightforward if we start from the top this time. We want to go for those 512 tons of cargo. The fleet that I'm mining in, we always go for 512. It's nice and balanced if everybody has this approximately the same amount of cargo. So Going for those two um, class 8 cargo racks and you have the cargo you need. I've gone with a 6A prismatic shield generator and this one has been modified with thermal resistance high cap giving us a nice even um, resistance. Again you don't need, uh, you don't need um, prismatics, uh, you could go normal shields if you want to, you can even go by weaves that would be just fine as well because we don't again we don't need that much hit point so in this case by weave might actually be a better choice to get some extra power, we can use that extra power somewhere else maybe. When it comes to collectors, I have gone for four 5A collector limpets, um, and these are modified with lightweight. Not really something you do, this is really like, you can see we are like taking over a significant amount of mass here, but it will give you extra jump range, but it's probably not a high priority upgrade to get these lightweighted, but it will help you increase your jump range, allowing you to reach stations further away. When we move on to the military compartments, I've left those empty. I mean, we don't really have the extra power to fit anything useful in them. I mean, the only thing that I would consider fitting here at this point would be uh, Guardian Shield reinforcement packs, but we don't have the power for it, so I just decided to leave them empty. There's no reason to put anything in there like a module reinforcement or hull reinforcements that we're not going to need because it's just going to gimbal jump range. And I would extra, I would rather have that extra jump range rather than have a little bit extra armor, a little bit extra uh, module protection. Then, of course, a 4A refinery. We don't really need a 4A. We can make do with it like a 2A or even like anything. But again, we had a class 4 slot, a slot available, so that's the one we're using. Then we have our 3A prospector. Going for a 3 is, I think, not mandatory, but it's really nice to have those two active limpets so you can prospect a little faster. And this one has also been modified. Uh, with lightweight and again here we're really only like getting just over um just over four tons of uh, um of less mass so again not uh, not that important um a detailed surface scanner so we can scan the rings and this one has expanded probe scan radius which is absolutely useless but i had one lying around that was already engineered very useful for for exploration 
But for a mining ship where we really only have it to scan the rings, it doesn't matter since a probe will always scan the full ring. So you don't really have to engineer this. Mine is engineered, but you don't have to do it. There's really no, uh, no reason to. It doesn't give you any benefits. So that's the build, but there is a few points that I want to touch upon. That is the fact that, as you can see, there is no fuel scoop. And that means you need to think a little bit about how you use your fuel. What I recommend you do when you do a, a let's call that a loop, from right when you take off from a station until you dock and log off again after the end of the session, is that you dock, you start out somewhere very close to Baran, where you're going to be mining. Because we have limited fuel and... I would I'd much rather like to just start very close to Baran, so I'm just one jump out, or even in system, there's a planetary uh, base and system that has a large landing pad. With a full cargo hull, and if you have a full tank, um, the ship here can reach around 124, 125 light years. Um, that is, of course, without any um, FSD boosters or uh, if you go what a f uh, like economic routing and something like that. So you probably have out to, I would say, about 100 light years. That's about the kind of range you're going to be expecting to have when you want to sell your cargo. If you want to go further, you have to begin to synthesize. Um, and that's why I like to have as much fuel as I can when I'm done mining. So I can go out to my cell location, hopefully without having to do a fuel stop on the way of synthesizing. And then when I'm done selling, I'm going to fly it back to the original station where I started, refuel it there, so the ship is ready for your next run. Of course, it would have been better if you were able to actually fit a fuel scoop into the build, but the only thing I would consider that we could really sacrifice at this point was either going shieldless, which I really don't recommend, or you can go uh, with less collectors, but again, then we're going to go down to just nine collectors, which I think is on the low side. I want to be up in the 12 area it is um it is a more comfortable position to be in thanks a lot for watching hope you enjoyed the video if you did give a like subscribe and until next time i'll see you guys in space